to thank all of those who have participated and contributed uh, because I think you've done a wonderful job of illustrating some of the essential dimensions of what we have in mind when we talk about a peace offensive. Uh, and I'd like to, my objective would be to answer a couple of questions uh, about the overall purpose and why we think not only this is necessary, I think we all understand the seriousness of the issues, which Ivo Schloss outlined very briefly in the beginning, but why we think that this can make a difference. Mm -hmm. uh, just for background, for those who are not acquainted with the work of the World Academy, very briefly, we were founded by eminent intellectuals and many scientists and many physicists uh, concerned with the result of the impact of science when we developed the nuclear e energy and nuclear weapons 75 years ago. Uh, and that taught us that we that, it, that science has a responsibility, that academia has a responsibility for addressing the issues that have been created by the creative works. Uh, and that's our origin. We've spent the last 65 years trying to understand better why the, the strategies up until now have not more fully been more fully successful. We still have nuclear weapons and nuclear threats and even accelerated uh, threats of nuclear weapons today than before, and what we need to do differently. And to abridge it very much, I'd like to say that this initiative is an effort to draw a synthesis of the insights and lessons we have drawn about what is necessary. And the presentations we've heard are a good illustration of the type of approach that we think is necessary. Uh, it's clear that traditional diplomacy by itself it has not and will not by itself be sufficient to solve the problems we face. In fact, in some sense today, with all of the technology, with all of the prosperity, with all of the knowledge we have, the threats today and the sense of insecurity today are greater than they have been probably since uh, in the last 75 years. And we have to ponder and ask ourselves, how is it when we're doing so many things that we think are important for our progress, actually it can be creating a greater sense of insecurity and threats. And I think our answers, the answers we've discussed today are indicative of the type of solutions we need. We clearly need approaches that are not just local. We're not trying to just settle one dispute between two countries internally or uh, in, in a region. We have to look at the global issues as a whole. And a, and a peace offensive has to have as its, as its measure what we can do at the global level. Not necessarily or entirely, certainly through global institutions. Our global institutions today are not yet mature enough, not yet empowered enough, as Anna said, to really deliver the force we need. But our scope should be greater. We shouldn't be relying either on the, the multilateral institutions or even the political leadership of countries alone, though they are certainly very important. This is too big a problem to be solved by diplomats or on their own or by institutions or political leaders on their own. This is something the whole humanity has to participate in. And when we talk about a peace offensive, we're talking about a global social movement in which all partners, all stakeholders, all sectors, we're working with the business community, high technology companies, uh, national uh, science academies, universities, parliamentarians, uh, international organizations of, parl of 180 parliaments of the world, religious organization. This is too big and too important to say it's the responsibility of somebody. It's all our responsibility. And I think what we illustrated today by the very interesting, insightful, uh, brief presentations of our speakers is to illustrate every discipline, every field of activity,
has a relevant contribution to make, and we none of us should sit back and wait for somebody else to solve these problems. Even the archaeology, it was a very resourceful <laughs> analysis, that even archaeology has a very important role to play. We need all to be part of this. And that's what we mean by the peace offensive. We're optimistic. We're not underestimating the challenges. We'd be very naive to do that. We know we're facing unprecedented challenges because the speed of global social evolution is unprecedented. It's never been this fast. It's never been this complex. We've never had all the people of the world being influenced by each other in such complex, intensive ways. We've never been seeing our technology develop so quickly. All of these things together. So we need a new strategy. We need an integrated strategy. As some of you have mentioned, what we call a transdisciplinary strategy. This is not the purview of a, a, any specialized group. We all have to contribute. And we have to understand the relationship between all the work of each of the disciplines, the impact of food on stability, the impact of refugees, the impact of climate change, the impact of our economies and our financial systems, all of them have a contribution to make. We can't pick, take leave them, any of them out. So we need a multidisciplinary, a multi-stakeholder, a multi-sector, a multi... Uh, we need to recognize the urgency, we have no time for moralizing and no time for pointing the fig fingers. As uh, one of our speakers mentioned, it has to be a value-based approach. We are not here to indict and condemn and say somebody's responsible for all our problems, and if only we get them, we've solved them. Humanity is responsible. Our economy is responsible. Our science is responsible. Our governments are responsible. Our financial systems are responsible. Our educational systems are responsible. We all need to come forward and see what we can do to contribute to being part of the solution rather than part of the problem. And, uh, and I think that's the spirit in, in which we've come. What we wanted to accomplish, and I'm really pleased by the efforts and contributions of all of you uh, in it, is to put this forward as an invitation. We as an academy, ISA as an academy, uh, alma mater as a, a university with a vision, many, many of you may not know what I only learned recently, that 50 years ago to the day, tomorrow, this, yeah. uh, our uh, Professor Toplak envisioned a university of peace and development. Uh, and now we're coming together. We didn't plan it that way for the dates. <laughs> we're coming today, together today to say we need an institution whose goal is the peace and development of all humanity. And we hope that this, this moment and this initiative and what we call this vision of peace offensive will be a, a, an invitation to stakeholders from all sectors of society to come forward and join us in a movement that really has the power to change things. In, we know the, the challenges of, that come from any technology. We've heard about some of the tremendous prospects from it. I believe in the depth of my heart, we have the capacity to make this work. We have the resources and the knowledge to make it work, but we can't do it in a fragmented way. We can't do it by trying to find who's the culprit is causing all our problems. We have to all step forward the way our fellows did when they founded it and say, we are responsible and we're going to come forward. And the we is not just scientists, it's educators, it's bankers, it's business leaders, it's it's the diplomats from every type, it's religious leaders, it's all. If we do that, this intensity, the difficulty, the un unprecedented challenges and threats we face can give us the power and the motivation to do what we haven't done before, is to break out of our conservatism or our tradition and do what really needs to be done. And that is to reinvent our institutions uh, and work together globally to make it happen.